Nine months ago, I uploaded the first impressions video on the LG Ultra Gear 32GS 95UE. And it somehow became one of the most watched videos I've ever done. I still don't know if that's because people love OLED or simply because they are looking to know more about one of the best monitors available in the segment. But here we are, nine months later, and I've been using it every single day. Work, gaming, editing, pretending to work while actually gaming, you name it, I've done it all with this monitor. And today I'm going to answer if it was worth it, or maybe more importantly, would I buy it again? The short answer, yes, to both questions. The long answer, get a seat, because we've got some things to talk about. Let's just get this out of the way first. This is the best monitor I've ever owned. Granted, it's also the first OLED monitor I've ever owned, so saying it's the best, it's not that hard. I've had some good IPS monitors in the past, but never an OLED. But still, the difference is night and day. It has completely ruined me for other monitors. Now, here's a quick spec rundown. 32-inch OLED panel, 4K resolution, up to 240Hz refresh rate, 0.03 milliseconds response time, just incompatible, FreeSync Premium Pro, all of it. Oh, and it was also one of the first monitors with dual modes, which lets you switch between 4K at 240Hz and 1080p at 480Hz. I'll tell you later why that's both brilliant and better executed at the same time. Also, pixel sound audio, speakers built into the screen itself. Sounds cool? Until you remember that 99% of people watching this either have headphones or actual speakers already. They are fine for light YouTube videos and zoom calls, but don't expect over-the-top sound clarity or ultra-deep bass. So, why does OLED feel so much better than your average IPS or VA panel? It's simple. Each pixel emits its own light. That means you can turn a pixel fully off, making blacks actually black. Not just that stark grey we are used to. Colors are richer, contrast is ridiculous, and because the pixels switch almost instantly, motion is butter smooth. No backlight bleeds, no faint glow in dark corners, none of it. It's one of those things that you only really appreciate after watching one in person. If you go to your local store, I'm sure you can find an OLED TV or monitor, and you'll get what I'm saying about the colors and the contrast and the quality of the image. And then, there's the speed of the panel. OLED is really that fast. It's actually faster than most gaming monitors. This is a 0.03 millisecond response time, and as I said before, you can really feel it in gaming. In fact, I believe it's just a matter of time until it becomes the standard for esports title and competitions. One important note, I bought it for both gaming and work. 4K gives me a ton of real estate for editing, writing scripts, and having way too many Chrome tabs open. For work, this thing is perfect. I like to always have a ton of windows open at the same time to avoid switching constantly between them and making everything ready at a simple glance. And 32 inches, together with a 4K resolution, is perfect for that. It's also a decent compromise for gaming as well. Gaming in 4K OLED is incredible. The detail, the clarity, everything. But there's a performance compromise if you're coming from a 1080p or 1440p monitor, like I was. The performance will take a substantial hit. I run this with an RTX 470 Ti and 60fps is pretty much guaranteed on most games at high settings. I refresh rate in 4K though, that's where your GPU starts sweating. Some games, yeah, I really need to dial down some of those settings like shadows. The LSS also helps a ton, although it stops being a true 4K image. But the experience is so sharp and responsive that you kind of forgive it. And the colors are so vivid, everything just looks better. It's that good. If I only wanted a monitor for gaming, I would most likely go with the 1440p one, because my GPU is really good for that resolution in particular. But since I wanted one to use for work as well, I decided to go with the 4K, with the loss of performance in mind. Now, on console, especially the PS5 Pro, this monitor is a dream. HDMI 2.1, variable refresh rates, it's flawless. Games feel good, look incredible, and the input lag is low enough that any time you miss a shot, you can't blame the monitor anymore. Maybe blame the connection. I've actually started playing with my consoles here, instead of the couch on the TV. Maybe I'll go back to the couch eventually just for the comfort, but for now, I'm good here, because the image is really great. All in all, it's a monitor that allows for every visual setting on modern consoles to be enabled. About that dual mode we've talked earlier. Switch it, and you get 1080p at 480Hz. If you play CS or Valorant, it feels really good. 
as long as you have the computer to support that many frames per second. I mainly play Counter-Strike, and it feels great. I've had a 144Hz monitor for years, and the jump to 480Hz is very noticeable. Personally, I feel the difference is not as big as going from 60 to 144Hz, but there's still an upgrade there. It's one of those upgrades with diminishing returns. The catch? On a 32-inch screen, 1080p isn't exactly crystal clear. It's not bad, but it's not great either. And if you're one of those players that even like to play on a lower resolution, expect big pixels to come into your life. The dual mode was also one of the reasons that made me buy this monitor. Because I enjoy playing one CS match here and there, and didn't want to compromise that or have two separate monitors just for that case in particular. I also tried dual mode on the recent Battlefield 6 open beta, and it's ideal for those games that you want to squeeze more performance and don't mind the visual hit. It's that good extra option to have. And speaking of things that are not pretty on this monitor, there's a feature where you can shrink the image down to 27 or even 24 inches. Which sounds real nice, because those are sizes more suitable for competitive gaming. But the feature is just not that well implemented. Due to the scaling ratio between 4K and 1080p at different sizes, the monitor pixels have to fit in the pixels on a 1080p resolution. The thing that doesn't make sense to me and makes me believe it's not that well executed is that 1080p is exactly 4 times less pixels than 4K, meaning the monitor should be able to use 4 pixels for every 1 pixel in a 1080p resolution. But it just doesn't do it well. The image becomes really, really blurry. And I just end up playing those games at a full 32 inch size. I used to love playing on a 24 inch monitor for CS, but now, after getting used to 32 inches, 24 feels really small. After 9 months, I'm not getting those jaw-dropping wow moments anymore. I'm just used to it. Which is actually a good thing, because it means this has become my baseline for what a good monitor looks like. Those moments happen when I use another monitor, but on a negative note. Suddenly, everything else but this monitor looks bad. Or worse, at least. So yeah, take what you will from this information. Now, the OLED question everyone asks. What about burn-in? I've been careful. I keep the pixel refresher on, I don't leave static images up for hours, no signs of burning just yet. But in the end, it's still OLED. Although the technology has evolved and burning is not a problem as big as it was in the past, it can still happen if you are not careful. If you are the type to leave your desktop paused with a bright white image and several details on the image, maybe don't. But at the same time, I just don't worry too much about it, since I don't want it to become a chore. I have my Windows settings to turn off the monitor after 2 minutes of inactivity and together with the pixel refresh technology present on the monitor, it's working great so far. Let's talk money, because this monitor is really, really expensive. Sure, it has everything you want, but it's expensive. There is no denying that. But if you think about how much time you spend staring at your monitor for work, games, movies, it kind of starts to make sense. You're buying a better daily visual experience but it's expensive, and you have great monitors for a decent price nowadays. Sure, they might not have all the features this one has, but this one is for very specific cases. Or if you have that extra money just lying around and want a better image overall. Also, not having an USB-C connection that allows me to connect my MacBook Pro is also a downside for me and maybe for other people. I knew about this before buying and still went for it with that compromise in mind. I use an HDMI cable and an external USB hub to connect everything. I wanted a one cable MacBook setup, but I have to use two for this setup. Could be worse. Would I buy it again? Short answer, yes. Long answer, yes, but with the awareness that this is absolutely a luxury purchase. If I somehow broke mine tomorrow, I'd have to think a bit before buying another to replace it. The thing is, there are cheaper options out there, but once you've had OLED at this size and quality, it's really, really hard to go back. So after 920 hours of use, here's the final verdict. This monitor isn't for everyone. If you're on a budget, if you don't care about perfect blacks, or if you think 60 yards is still good enough, just save your money. But if gaming is your hobby, if you want the absolute best display quality you can get right now and you can afford it, this is the one. No question about it. So what would you pay this monitor with? A 4090, a 5090, a PS5 Pro? Let me know in the comments. If you've been using it too, I'm curious. Have you noticed any burn-in or error like me and still living the old ad dream? Thanks for watching. 
drop a like if you enjoyed it, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next one.